Hey, how you doing? My name is Anthony Gray. Welcome to another episode of Grayscale. Um, on one of my live shows, I did a springtime painting. Very simple, really. Uh, clouds, cliff, trees, grass, you know, berries on the bush or whatnot. And I did it with a black background. Um, we'll do something similar with this one. Um, the last painting I did live was uh, vertical. The paper was vertical. This was horizontal, so um, pretty much the same thing, but uh, it'll have a different look being that it's um, horizontal. Okay, and we're going to do, do it in layers, work from the back to the front. Okay, and we're going to get right on to it. No fuss. This is called no ocean, light. even though I'm using it for a sky. All right, it's a grayish blue. And like I said, I kind of like it. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to just take it. And I'm gonna just put it right on there like that. The glycerin to help it stay a little, a little wet, a little tacky, just like this. Okay, just like that, just a little bit of white. And I'm gonna take the white, and I'm gonna swirl it right in there, just like this, just like that. Blend it right in, and it's gonna pick up some of that grayish blue. Okay. And I'm just swirling it in, just like so. Now, as the paint starts to, to, to tack up a little bit, you can make your own layers of clouds while doing this. I'll wisp some of that up there like that a little bit. That's all I'm doing, really just bling, blending it right into the blue. Okay, you can get depth and all of that just by doing what, what you see me doing right now. I'm going to go right back into my white, just straight titanium white. That's all. And let's do another one right here. Let's, I'll just tap it in like that because I kind of want that that separation up in there. And I'll just put it right on in there like so. And I'll wisp out a few and then just keep in a circular motion. And you see all the cloud action you get just by wisping it a little bit. Okay. You're going to get different tones and shades and gradations of white mixing in with the blue. Just like that. And just keep stirring it in there. Now, as it tacks up, okay, as the paint tacks up, it's starting to dry a little bit. Uh, we'll put, put one right up in here. Just like that, coming down. And we'll whisk some of that, just like that. And we'll work the bottom edge in there, darken it right up there, just like so. I'm going to strengthen that one right up in here. Strengthen that up a little bit. Bring that up in there. And just like that. And we're going to bring some of that down a little bit. You kind of want a, an active top layer there and work it right in there very natural looking clouds nothing really crazy okay but just like that you have them go any which way any direction you want you can even build on top of those if you desire to okay I could put like one more little fella um, probably up in here like this. I'll just, just want to, I'll drag it down a little bit. And, and just stir and churn the bottom edge right into that blue. Keep on going. It, it'll fade more and more into the blue. Just like that. All right. And that's it. Now I'm Instant gonna get some glycerin. I'm going to put it here toward the bottom here where the mountain would be so I can fade it out a little bit. I'm not going to do it from on the top, but more on the bottom so I can get a nice fade right up in there. Now, by the time I mix my mountain color, okay, it may just dry up. And if it does, okay, I'm just mixing, mixing some mountain color as I'm talking to you. I'm using cad red, phthalo blue, and raw wipe of paint here. If it's, um, if the glycerin starts to wear a little bit 
that's quite all right. I like my mountains kind of craggy looking too. So I'm gonna get some interesting peaks and edges on this fellow. Have some come up like this. Nice sharp downward. And basically I'm looking for just dark. No more, no less. Gotta get some more here. I gotta strengthen up some of this peaks and stuff. Cause then it'd be more of a cliff thing here. So I'll raise some of that up there. Just like that. I really want interesting. Let's bring him up a little higher. Now I'll probably mess with the mountain a little bit more than what you see me doing because I just want it a little higher up there. Well, th that might work. <laughs> Hence, I said might work. Still got a little playing around to do here. I'm, I like that. I think I'll, I'll work with that. That'll be fine. Now, um, the glycerin has already dried. I'm just putting a little wet paint. Wet paint. I'm just putting a little paint down here. Something for um, me to drag the stuff down into. Just like that. All right, now I'm gonna get some glycerin now. Let me wipe my palette knife off. I really won't need it for this stage. I'm gonna get some glycerin. And I'm gonna go just like that, right down below. Just down here like that. You see where it's fading and, and everything's streaking? That's fine. That is also, um, that's fine. I'll bring some of that down in here like this. I'll tap, I'll bring some of it down, drag it down. Drag some of it right down there like this. All up in there, just dragging it right down, just like that. I'll work with fading that away now. I'll show you how to do that. Like I said, the glycerin keeps it wet for a little while. Take that same brush I had, and you're gonna go half into the clear, half into the, the white area, and you're gonna just fade those edges in a little bit. Just like that. Fade them in. See this, all that in here? Circle it. Fade them right in. Kind of a, I'm gonna get a little fogginess going. I'm going a little, where it's a little darker at? Bring some of that down in there. Now remember, I'm gonna do some highlights and add some bolder like things to this. Okay. So don't worry, I'm just gonna make it a little more solid down in here, drag some of this dark color downward. As you drag it downward, you lightly just fade off, fade that stuff. I'm gonna get a little more white on my brush or on my little mop head here. I'm gonna take the white, just like this, just brighten it up a little bit. I'm just dragging it in there, just like this. Make some instant mist, okay. Just want to mist it up a little. This thing, ew, this is not going to be the final is what I'm trying to say. But I just want to get some of that mist cover in there. Just a little bit. And once this is dried up a little, I get to play around and fade some of this stuff too. I'm just bringing X strokes a little heavier just to blend some of that into that dark. Just a little bit. Just like that. You can play with it and play with it and play with it and play with it as much as you want, as much as you feel you need to. Just like that, all right? Leave it just like that. You know how you have the quote unquote ugly stage of a painting? Well, this is part of it. I just wanna soften and blur that bottom. And I'm gonna take this guy. And I'm gonna slowly make a little cliff, and whatnot. And we'll start from here. And you let the paint. What you do with the, with the brush, with the little 
little roll of paint there. Just a little slight roll, a little tiny. And what you're going to do, you don't put your hand here. Put your hands here like this. And you'll take it, get as close to the edge as you can, and you'll take it and you just slide down. You see those little crevices and cracks that it automatically makes? That's what you're looking for. Okay. And you can just have a little fun with these guys. I'll take this one here and I'll kind of angle it that way. Face them down, bring it down across like that. Interesting pockets of light and dark just by playing around with it. Come down like, like that a little bit. Highlight side. Now, when you do the highlight, the extreme highlights get a little more white. You don't have to put it on um, as strong as you did the previous colors. That won't be necessary, but you just want to highlight certain things. Mainly the top, and you just slide it downward. Interesting little pockets and directions. Okay. like that and what it's gonna do what it's doing it's gonna catch the paint that's already on there okay that's what I'm, and it's gonna make the those little highlights there oh I think I'll get a little rim right there and have it just come down like that straight down like so and then we'll highlight some of the guys in the front there like that make a game out of it enjoy yourself while you're doing this have this one come straight down just like that there and I won't need to do any more with that that's actually perfectly fine I'm just gonna rinse off my palette knife Just like so. Okie dokie then. Now that we have that pretty much it's very simple to do so. I'm just taking the titanium white right now, mixing it into the, the glaze just a little bit, and I'll tap up in here, just like this. Now remember it's got the it's got the medium in it. Okay. So it's gonna be more of a of a glazy type of effect. And what it's gonna do is create look a little mist. In there where you'll still see some of the detail of the rocks all right and it's just a little bit of maroon blue and red together I'll put in some of that blue too and basically I just want to establish where maybe the hill would be I'll kind of make it come up and bow out a little bit something interesting like like this all right and then I'm a block let's get that grass pattern back just block it in moving right along I'm going to get a brush that everybody should be familiar with, old Bob Ross brush. Now look at this brush. Okay, one is made out of yak hair. It's very dense, very thick. All of that is packed full of bristles, full of bristles. So it takes a, uh, quite a bit of paint to get um, what you're looking for with this um, type of brush. Okay, I guess I'll use, just for the sake of time, I'll use sap green here. I'm going to put a little sap green down and I want my grass to be a little deep so with that sap green I'm just rearranging my little paints here so they don't 
fall all over the place on me. That would just be embarrassing. I'm going to get a touch of cad red in that green. Okay, you know that it's the direct opposite. I don't need too much. I don't need an even amount of, of, of the red. I'm going to take my brush. And I'm going to dip into the red and the green together. It's going to give me a brownish, reddish brown type of, type of thing there. And as you can hear, I'm tapping right into the bristles of this guy. And I'm going to open up the bristles a little bit as I'm doing it. Because it will give me that pattern that I'm looking for. Something like that, as you can see. Alright, I'm going to use the side of the brush. And I'm going to tap in some of that dark in there. Just like that. And I'm just, just tap it away. Now, as I get more and more into the tapping... Okay, it's giving me that brownish look. But once I put the green on top of this, okay, you'll kind of see where I'm going with it all. I'm not going to drag it. I just tap. Get it close to that line as you can. And I'm not going to let all that blue go away. All right, I'm just using my other hand here. Let's get some interesting patterns. Get as close to that. Um back edge as you can. Now I'm going to go, I got a little bit of paint off of it. And so I'm going to just use the side here and pat some more. I'm going to get some more paint because I see it's getting a little, little low. There we go. Put it right up in there. I'm not getting rid of all the blue. I'm just tapping it in there. Turn my brush over. I got more paint and continue with the flow of the previous hill okay just like that I'm not getting rid of the blue that's not necessary all right going back into the sap green actually let me scrape some of this I don't need the brown anymore at least not for right now I'll take this brown that I just made I'll just put it somewhere else right now because I may come back to that a little later bite my palette knife off here Let's quickly clean Mr. Bob Ross brush here. This brush also retains, as you can hear, quite a bit of water. Okay. Now, I'm going to go right, right straight back into my sap green. Then I'm going to tap it into the green. I'm just brightening up, brightening the, the sap green just a wee bit. Not as dark as you would think, but just enough to show amongst that brown. And it's going to mix into that brown a little bit. I got the interesting little grass patterns on the uh, brush. Okay, and once again, you just kind of judge where your highlights are. Okay, as you tap it in there. Now remember, as you tap this green in there, the more you tap into it, it's going to take the shade of some of that brown. So just keep that in mind when you, when you do it. Okay, so I got a little pattern going here. I'll get some of that bright and bring it down here like this. Just like that. If you don't like what's going on with it, change the angle of your brush a little bit. Okay. But what I got here is pretty cool. You just tap it. Remember, the more you tap in one spot, the more it's going to recede into that brown color, which is not fully dry yet. I'm turning the brush over. Get a nice little highlight here on the edge. Just right up in here. Brighten that edge a little bit. And then you just tap away. Now you see I got bits of white that's kind of clinging on, but that's okay. You keep tapping. You tap that white right out of there. Don't drag it just you know just tap okay as you see we have our grasses in there now we're gonna get to the highlighting I'm gonna go into my cad yellow I'm not gonna use any white that won't be needed I'm mixing it into the green that I already have all right that will be highlight enough and we're gonna just highlight um, the areas where you will feel the Sun will hit as you see just a light touch will do 
Okay, and you just tap around, have a good time with it. Right where you think the sunlight would trail on these on these guys, just like that. A little bit, a little bit of just a little bit of highlight. Um, tap in some highlight up around in here a little bit, just like that. Just a little touch is all you would need. Okay, I'm getting some more yellow. Dip it right into my green and we're going to continue on. Sometimes it's just a light touch is all you need. Okay, trail around here in the toward the, well, to me I'm calling it the front, but it's actually the back, back there. Just a little bit back there and a little tuft of something right up in here. Okay, not this is not gonna make all that dark disappear. Okay, and I'll just tap in the bottom a little bit. And a little bit in here. You don't need too much. Okay. <clears throat> just that little bit. Remember, it may appear bright, but the color recedes as it starts to dry. Okay, so keep that in mind when you when you do them. And you can always layer back on top again and again until you get to the um point of brightness that you would like to achieve all right all right and i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna just splatter some well, like bluebell like things in here in certain spots the closer you are to your painting the more you can kind of control the splatter effect okay just like that just a, just a little bit here and there okay i'm gonna clean off of the brush I'm going to put some bright yellow ones in there also. So I'm going to get back into my white. A little bit of yellow. Find a nice little spot here to mix it together. Loosen up the paint just a little bit. Just a little bit. Maintain a little bit of thickness. So um, when you do the splatter, okay, it doesn't run all over the place on you. And escape running into your mountains and such. You kind of don't want that. That's bad for business. So I'm putting in a few. All I need is a few of these guys. I'll put some red ones in. Red will be like a firecracker. So be, ch be choosy where you put some of this stuff. Okay, so that red will pop out a bit. Actually, the more colors you add to your grass, the more pristine and more calm it looks like it's more manicured. All right, that's just how it is. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. Now, there's different right. types of fan brush, obviously. Um, smaller ones, larger ones, I'll show you. I mean, just fan brushes are different sizes and different types. Okay, I'm gonna use a smaller one because I'm gonna put some trees up in here. Now, when I put the trees up in here, all right, the trees will not appear to be at the ledge. All right, they're gonna be like okay, further back. You kinda want there. something to be set back a bit. I'll just do a little line here, all right? And I'll take the corner of the brush. Now I kind of like my trees with a little interesting kind of shapes to them. I like my middles to be kind of full, but the outside of the trees can have um, different little brush looks there. Just like this. Put them right back there, like that. Vary the heights on them also. And now I also like my trees to be a little crowded, like they're not standing there like like 10 soldiers okay that you don't you don't want that but you do want your interesting little shapes between uh, your trees just getting some more paint I gotta loosen it up a little bit with water because it's starting to tack up and you kind of want the paint a little loose for this do not pounce okay let's put a short guy right there always start with the furthest corner of the brush okay and like I say I kind of like my trees full in the middle and have an interesting outside shape okay yeah I'm getting all sorts of notifications and such but you know that's what happens I'm put one big one right up in here like, like this and another thing about painting and composition be very mindful of what what you're where you're placing your subjects at okay make them a little thin then I'll bow them out a little bit Make this one kind of stand out there, just like that. And you can see there's little pockets of clouds and stuff going through the leaves 
of the uh, pine. Make it look like, you know, a bird can actually fly in there, land, and, and all of that good stuff. I'll put some shorter ones in here like that. Like I say, I'm more interested with the outside shapes. Keep the, I'm just turning my brush around. Keep the dark, the, the, um, the trees in the middle kind of, kind of full in here. Darken them, darken them up in here where the, where the, um, the trunk would be. All right. Oh, I'll put one right here and have a little fun with them. I'm just using the corner of the brush for some of these guys here, just like that. Getting a little more water. Got to loosen up the paint a little bit more. This paint's fairly thick. And I would rather take the water and loosen up the paint than I just keep adding um, the paint. The paint is still pretty, pretty strong. Okay, it'll, it'll, it'll keep that um, opaqueness to it. And just have a little fun with your trees. Experiment with different, le different strokes to give you interesting patterns. Okay, and as you see, as you group them together, you don't have to join them all. You can put a little pocket in there. All right, there will be no highlights on these guys. Just a just a general silhouetted shape will be more than fine. Because I'll put trees you know, over here, and they'll be highlighted a little more. Let's put a tall one. Let's put a monster one right, right here. Going straight down. He's right off the tape here, and you continue. You continue the flow right off the tape. Continue to do your, your painting. There we go. Right off the tape there. Make him a little larger. Angle your brush. Get some interesting patterns going with it. I'm going to get some more paint. I can You can tell when your paint's getting a little bit low. Okay. Because you still want that darkness in there. And when I say dark, I don't necessarily mean black. Okay. Oh, we'll put one right about that size. Certain fan brushes got kind of a wild um, look to them. Just like that. He's a little gappy. And I'll just give him a little peek there. Just like that. I'll kind of cover him in a little bit like that. With that one. This one here needs a little more definition like so okay I could put one more there but I think I'll just save it for probably a nice size tree right up here in the front somewhere so I'll leave I'll leave that open right there just clean off the brush put the brush back I'm also a big proponent of putting brushes back where you where you kind of got them that just saves a lot of headache. Trust me. Please trust me. It saves a whole lot of a whole lot of headache. Just putting them back. All right. So we're done up there. We can bring the camera down a little bit. Let's um. Let's put a bush. We'll put a bush in here. And all I'm going to do is take it. Now I want interesting shapes. All right. So I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna give it a little, little, little push here, a little dab like that. Cause I want interesting bush shape, just like that. Keep the middle pretty, um, keep the middle pretty dense. Okay, you want you want a pretty dense middle there. I'm taking my brush. I'm going in one direction. Okay, it kind of gives you an odd looking shape. Turn it upside down. Okay, I think I'll put a bush. Since I got a bush here, I think I'll put the bush. Well, I'll put it right here in this corner. I'll just kind of go up with it like that. But look at that shape. See that? Nice wild looking bush there. I'll have it come up a little bit, but not, not by much. And that's probably all I need right there. Just trail him right there. All right, now I'm gonna take that yellow. I'm pouncing into the yellow. Okay, 
I'll lighten it up a little bit. I'm going to give that same push up toward the top. Just like that. I'm not going to get rid of all the dark. But I'm just going to give it a couple of good pushes there. Alright. Just like that. I need to get some more yellow and some more white. To brighten that up a little bit. Now what I'm going to do after I brighten it up. Is that I'm not going to touch it as hard as I did the previous two colors. I'm so getting the white and the yellow together. It's still got a little bit of that green in it. I don't have to touch as hard. Just a little tap will do. And go in a circular motion. Like that. Toward the top there. Okay. Go in a circular motion. Just like that. You really don't need um, too much. I'll just darken this with the the light color right up in there and I'll just tap it in circular motion I'll bring some of that right up in here like that and bring it outward just like that and you can tap some of that just like this now get a nice little pattern going like that with these just like that I'll bring some of that up here all it takes is a little touch brighten that one up a little more Turn the brush around, bring some out there like that. Put some down here, right off the tape there. Now I'm gonna do something with this guy too. You'll see. A little cad red, just like that. Just a little. Remember, cad red is like a firecracker. Now I'm gonna brighten up that red. I'm gonna just pounce my brush here on my towel, open up the bristles just a little bit. I'm gonna get some white. And I'm gonna tap the white into the bristles, get some red, tap the red into the bristles, a little more white. Nope, content, I'm not gonna um, completely marble it. Okay, open up the bristles, and just a touch, boom, just like that. See, just a little, little touch in certain areas. Up around in there, like a, a little bit. Where it's dark a little, just like that. Just a couple of touches. Go on the other side, do the same thing. Put some on the top, okay? Come where it's a little dark at, just like that. Bring some more up, up top there. Give it a little push on some of those guys, a little fire brand up in there like that. Maybe up here down toward the bottom. Um, I like the way it looks, so I'll put a little fire brand up in here. A couple of them up in there like that. Maybe one hanging around out there like this. Maybe, maybe a little, a little bit of something there too. Just a little bit, like that. Just little patches here and there. I'll put one up in here too. Something like that. Okay, that's about all I would need really for that. Rinsing off the brush. I'm gonna get a little bit, if I can get some, I don't see where I can. Uh, I'll just get a little bit of this blue. I'll pop that blue right in there a little bit. Okay. And maybe I'll get a little bit of a blue something right up in there in the dark. I'll put some of that blue right up in here too. Just a little bit. Kind of soften up some of that green a little. Your choice, really. Your choice. Just going to rinse off the brush real quick. Okay, and that's about all I need really for this brush. So I'll put this brush back, forgive my head. All right, so we got a few of these popping around in there, which also establishes depth. Okay, and sometimes I can give it a little push. I'm just returning some of the dark back in there where I think it might be a little there. So I'm gonna bring some of that dark back. And you can vary the pressure on these guys too. Okay. Bring some dark back in here too. Like a little, little bit of dark back in there. Just a little, little push or a little tap. Bring some of that dark back. Give it interesting shapes in there. Don't always go straight up and down. Okay. I can put some dark in here too. Give some body to that bush back there. Same thing here. Just a little bit. Just like that. Okay, 
No, I can do a little bit of that up around in here too. This is where kind of nice size tree is going to be right up around there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pat and bring some of this dark and bring it down the hill a little bit. So I'm anticipating a shadow of the tree right up in here, just like that. Well, you see how I got it flat around here? The tree's going to be up around here, but I got that shadow going here. Okay. And you can maybe bring a little bit of that shadow up here. But follow the path of the mountain, though. Just like that, a little bit. Scramble some of that in there like that. Now you got a shadow. All right, because you know the tree's going to be in the a here. nice deep color. And this also, this method of making the pine tree also takes quite a bit of paint, but a light touch. Not good to pounce. At least not with this. Okay, we're going to get a nice sized pine tree. Um, we'll put him a little crooked. We'll put him right here. Just like this. He, he goes straight down like that. Okay, and here we go. It's a slight touch. See this? And when you do, when you touch, you just move your hand left or right. Okay, it'll be a strong middle, but he'll be have a wide and interesting, just like that. Very interesting looking. Um, remember, don't press too hard. And you want an interesting looking um, trailing edge to leave back there. Have some come out a little bit more, just like that. I'm gonna get a little more. It's dark because I want it particularly dark in the middle. Okay, the light, the 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 depth of the tree on the edges can have you know be kind of floaty and whatnot. Put some of that dark right down in there like that. So he's a nice size fella. Right up around in here. Give him more of an edge in some of these, just like that. All right, no more, no less than something like that. Clean off the brush. <coughs> now we're gonna do some interesting looking highlight for this guy. I'm gonna use a little bit of phthalo. Phthalo has some blue in it. I'll put the phthalo blue in another spot here. Get some nice phthalo blue going. Usually trees like this, like I said, it takes a little more paint. All right, so I got the phthalo green, which is with this brown. It's gonna be pretty dark. I'm gonna scoop up some yellow. Get a little more yellow. Okay, here we go. Same premise, plenty of paint, light touch. Very light touch. And we're gonna do the same thing. Light touch. Because you don't want to destroy all the all the dark. Okay? And you want to accentuate really the edge. Bring some of that green on the other side. You don't want to kill all of your darks. It doesn't take much to uh give this fella the its green tint. Okay. Just like that. Now, when I put the dark, uh, the light color on here, it's going to mix with that green, remember. Okay. Now that I kind of soaked up all of my yellow, which is, you know, this okay. I'm going to still use some of that green in the yellow. There, like that. And I could throw that in the garbage because I don't need it anymore. I'll keep the cap, though. Now, I'm going to use a slight, and I do mean a slight touch of white. Okay. The smallest amount of white you can kind of muster out there because you want to strengthen the yellow. And remember, I'm not cleaning the brush. The brush has got the green in it. So I'm dipping into my yellow. Pick another spot here. I'm dipping into my cad white. Stir it up here. And all white is going to do is provide a tint to the yellow green mix get plenty of it a light touch now because my brush is kind of uh, wild and woolly looking okay and I'm just gonna really accentuate come down here on the one side here like that 
and bring some of that, cross it down. Get little batches right there, usually on the edge. But you see the look it gives. Okay, I can bring some of that light on the other side, have it peek around a little bit. Just like that, not too much. Bring them in there like, like so. I can deaden some of that if it's too bright. Just like like that. But that's basically basically it for Mr. Tree. Like I say, it's this weird steely, it's this weird gray bluish thing. And I'm gonna play around with some shadow here. Some off lighting for this guy. Bring some of that up in there too. Just like that. If you got some green that's a little too strong, you can cover that up with that, that blue a little bit. Something like so. Very, very effective. <coughs> All right, I'm gonna lightly touch the edge here. Give it a little bit of that. Just like that. Kinda shine some of that up here. Just like this. And put a little bit of that up around here a little. So it kinda brightens up that that patch a little bit in there, just like that. You can do the same thing on the other side here, brighten up that patch just a little bit in spots. Maybe a little bit in there like that. Okay, not too much. Okay, tone some of that down in there. I might use my finger, I'll tone some of it. Don't need too much of it. And there you go. So let's take the tape off. Let's see what she looks like after I, I sign my name. I do thank you for uh, checking this out. I hope um, it gave you uh, some ideas on what to do for yourself. You know, if you want to try something like this, I would love to see it. Put it on the website there. My uh, name should have came across already for the... Uh, Facebook site. Throw in my signature real quick. Questions and comments, you can leave them down below. I know you guys probably every time you visit a YouTube site, they're all they all say that. If you like, subscribe, comments down below. Good, bad, or indifferent. Love to hear from you. I really would actually it would be great to you know i do answer the comments and all that good stuff so let's see what she looks like when i raise it up here let's, let's do this just like that so let's see what she looks like all right slowly now i'm working with paper obviously on a canvas i can just rip this stuff right off but uh paper you gotta be a little more gentle with Part of my head, my waist back skin is like right beside me here. And I do a pull lift so I don't shred too much of my paper. Even though this watercolor paper does take a bit of punishment, that's why I use it. It's 125 pound weight. So it can take a beating. All right. Like I say, which is why I use it. And there we go. That's what she looks like with this nice, sharp, clean border. Now, let's take the, you can see the different planes in this painting. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and both these are eight. So you got eight planes, see? Two bushes, that's one. Mound of grass, that's two. Another mound of grass, that's three. Tree is four. Okay, the fog is five. Cliff is six. The trees in the back are seven. Then you got the sky back there, that's eight. Okay. So everything is everything. Everything's back there. The trees are receded back there. They don't look like they're on the edge of the cliff. Okay, so um, the fog also separates, gives you distance between the little cliff and the trees in the back. And you got the highlight where the sun would be shining here. Okay, you, you, you got your bushes here. You got your shadows. 
you know, up the hills and whatnot. You got the pockets of dark in the in the wild bushes there with their wild flowers and all of that good stuff. Okay, so all in all, I think we we've uh, we did pretty good. I'm just taking my little script liner. I'm gonna pop a I'll pop a I make pretend eagle in here. I'll give him a nice wing wingspan too, just like this. Give him an impressive wingspan. I'll clean out the brush. I might have a touch of white somewhere in here. And put a little dot there, and there's there's your little eagle right right back there. He's just chilling. All I need is one. Okay, my little my little V bird, V bird eagle. <laughs> okay. And you'd be surprised what a change a picture would make just by putting that little eagle up there. A little bit of <coughs> a little bit of wildlife. But there you have it. Okay. Um, not difficult to do. Series of uh, taps and strokes and whatnot. Fan brush and a uh, fan brush, the Bob Roth two inch brush and um, the angle brush. And, and there you have it, about four or five paints. I used um, I used uh, ocean blue, cad yellow, cad um, um, titanium white. Um, I used cad red, phthalo blue, and uh, some burnt umber with phthalo and sap green. And that was it. Anything else? I just mixed and blended, which gives you <coughs> the gray here. You know the the brown and the yellow mixed with some white, a little bit of the blue gives you that grayish look to your rocks um, there's nothing here totally totally white maybe perhaps just the uh, just the clouds really okay and even they're tinted with blue um, I think the only thing that's pure white that might be my signature on this so I hope you enjoyed this session and um, let me know what you think and um, I'll see you when I see you take care of yourself God bless Peace.